We got week four of the OFL. Those are the 1-2 Denver Broncos coming off a loss against the New Orleans Saints. Are set to take on the 2-1 Miami Dolphins also coming off a loss last week to the undefeated Buffalo Bills. The only user team who's not lost yet is here's Demarcus Rice making his starting debut. His first completion of his career will go to Michael Thomas for a gain of 14 and then on third down. Demarcus Rice, the former Iowa State Cyclone over to Brandon Cooks. If the Broncos move the chain, they would eventually kick a field goal, taking a 3-0 lead from the rookie Jermaine Wells, UBL legend. Of course, he survived Ligma. As here is the Dolphins offense. Cam Britton on third down, picked off by C.G.J. Chauncey Gardner Johnson, the former Florida Gator. Broncos will get the football back, which means it's more rice time. As on third down, he would be intercepted by C.J. Mosley as Mosley would say, well, you can do, I can do better. He gets an interception, and then the Bron or the Dolphins have it. Sorry, as on third down, Cam Britton throws it backwards, but it still goes forwards. Madden being Madden, defying gravity. Madden in a nutshell, both the Broncos and Jaguars. Broncos and Jaguars. Broncos and Dolphins would swap field goals, so now it's 6-3 to three as Cam Britton on second down over to Kingston Nickel, the rookie out of Indiana State as the Dolphins are driving Cam Britton over to Kingston Nickel. Nickel has it breaking tackles, getting to the 7-yard line as Miami is getting awfully close to that end zone. First and goal, Cam Britton looking to throw it. He would be sacked by the Denver Donkeys. Dolphins would have to call a timeout from head coach Daniel Horowitz in his second season in the OFL. Second and goal, Cam Britton, the former Cal Golden Bear, would find his man Calvin Ridley in the end zone, and the Dolphins would take their first lead of the day, making it 10-6. Now in the third quarter, Cam Britton, you might as well call him Kim Jong-un because he's launching nukes. He'd be intercepted by Artie Burns, who runs out of bounds for or runs out of the end zone, sorry, for some reason. Uh, but it wouldn't really matter as Demarcus Rice would go up the middle just a little for Michael Thomas for a gain of 23. So no safeties would happen there as on first down, Demarcus Rice has more time than Tone waiting in a McDonald's drive through looking for the end zone. And he would be intercepted by the Dolphins. That's going to be Matthias Fairley making the play. Is that it's still 10-6. to Here's Cam Britton on the screen for Hunter Henry. The former Arkansas Razorback is pummeled at the 39. Nice play nonetheless. First down. Here's Cam Britton scrambling like he's laid on a date. He would fumble it. The Dolphins, however, would recover. Now in the fourth quarter, Broncos have it at the 9. First and goal. Zach Watson stuffed up like Thanksgiving turkey for a loss of 3 yards. Now third and goal from the 7. As Demarcus Rice looking to throw it. Rice, he is going to scramble like eggs on a frying pan. And he would be sacked by Frank Clark. And the Broncos would be unable to score a touchdown. They would just have to settle for a field goal. And it is a one-point game with 3.52 left. Jermaine Wells, 3-for-3 three three on the day. Dolphins have it as Britton over to the rookie, Kingston Nickel. The first-round rookie connection. Now for 46, Marlon Mack. With the whack going way back as we got a flag on the play. This would be huge if it's on Denver and it is. Face mask. That would lead to a big play from Cam Britton to Hunter Henry for six. And the Miami Dolphins will make it an eight-point lead. Technically, it's still a one-possession game. Denver could score a touchdown and go for two. Let's see if it happens. They have it at the 27. It's Demarcus Rice on first down. Finds Lance Spurlock Jr. for the touchdown. And now the moment of truth. Can the Denver Broncos tie this game up? And the answer would be yes. It's Demarcus Rice over to Brandon Cooks. We are tied up at 17 with 150 to go. Can Cam Britton drive his team down the field and get the win? As he's going to find Dante Pettis on second down. Pettis brings it to the 46. Dolphins quickly moving. Very next play, Cam Britton has plenty of time looking deep down the field for Kingston Nickel. 
who brings it to the 21. With a minute 10 left, Dolphins are in field goal range. Here's Graham Gano with 16 seconds remaining. It is good. And the Dolphins will take a three-point lead as Graham Gano, the hero. But Denver still has a little bit of time left. Let's see if they can do anything. 12 seconds left. First down. Here's Demarcus Rice as he'd be intercepted one more time. This one is made by Jordan Lewis, who currently leads the LFL in interceptions with three. That's how this game went in. Dolphins get the win, 20-17. to Demarcus Rice was not very good in his debut. Cam Britton was mad, as neither team could really run the ball well. All around, this was a very evenly matched game. Both teams played very similarly. A lot of interceptions from each side, not a lot of running the ball. Okay play at quarterback. As the Dolphins improved to 3-1, and one, Broncos go down to 1-3. and three. Now, let's take a look at the rest of the LFL, starting in Carolina. The Panthers get their first win of the year. I know head coach Father John probably isn't too happy. 28-34 is your score. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers lose their first. They go down to 3-1. and one. The Bucs certainly one of the surprise teams of the season so far. They are tied in the ONFC South for the divisional lead. West Lent played pretty well. Will Greer wasn't too bad either. Todd Gurley played pretty well. All around solid win for Carolina. It was a close game. They are now 1 2 and 1. Next up, the Atlanta Falcons defeat the Kansas City Chiefs in overtime 34 28. As Eric Dungy, another phenomenal performance. He's definitely up there for OFL MVP so far, and he did not throw a single completion in week one. So that really says something on how he's playing. He's been truly incredible. Meanwhile, the Chiefs, the reigning OAFC champions, will go down to 2. 1-1, one and one. still a solid year for them as they try to make it back into the OFL Bowl, and they're hoping that this time they can actually do the dang thing and get the win. The Detroit Lions beat the Minnesota Vikings 35-28. Vikings will go down to 1-3, and three, while the Lions win their third straight. They go to 3-1. The Lions were sort of in the middle of the road last year, so were the Vikings, and so far Detroit has the lead in that division. We're only four weeks in, but they have definitely been very solid, and they have beat some solid teams. Vikings really haven't been good this year, but other than that, they have beat some t challenging foes, such as the Washington Redskins a couple weeks ago, who are definitely one of the more talented teams in the league. The Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Tennessee Titans 17-7, as Coach Marley Bowman and the Titans will go down to 2-2, two and two, while Pittsburgh goes up to 3-1. Of course, Pittsburgh won the inaugural OFL Bowl last year. They lost in the second round of the playoffs. They're hoping to get back to the promised land, and this year has definitely been promising as they are one of the few teams who has been consistently good all three years in the OFL. Next up, the Indianapolis Colts beat the Chicago Bears in a thriller, 37-34. Of course, these two teams swapped rookie quarterbacks, Jack Jackson for Herb, 9. Jackson had a really good game, three touchdowns, no picks. Nine also had three touchdowns, but he did throw three interceptions. While the Colts will improve to three and one, Chicago Bears go down to one and three. They've lost all three of their games, I think, have been very close, so that's not too fun. They definitely have talent, but they've sort of been unable to put it together. While Indianapolis has won three in a row, they only won like four or five last year, so they should match their win total pretty quickly. Next up, the Green Bay Packers get pummeled by the Jacksonville Jaguars, 47-21. to We only have one undefeated team left, but that does not include the Jaguars. As while they have not lost, they've not won in every game they've played. They are 3-0-1, so I don't really count that as undefeated, but they sort of are. Meanwhile, the Packers, I believe, are now 2-2. Two and -two. If I'm not mistaken, they might be 3-1. and one. I'd have to check. We will look at standings at the end of the video. And this is all pre-recorded, but I just, I, I forget. And then look at this. The Buffalo Bills beat New England 23-20. The Bills are the only undefeated team, excluding the Jaguars in the LFL. Yeah, the Bills have made some questionable moves this year, but you got to give them credit. They are the only team in the league that's 4-0 up to this point. Last year, they were pretty average. They were contending for the playoffs, but that ultimately went to New England, who's now 1-3. And now the, a the OAFC look East looks like a two-team race between the Bills and the Dolphins. Jets are 1-2. and two. They did have a bye week this week. Maybe they had a chance, but Bills and the Dolphins both look really solid at this point. The Oakland Raiders won their first game of the year, 
over the Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers go down to 1-3 as they have lost three straight as the Chargers. They did beat the Saints Week 1, but it really seems like they have fallen off. Maybe the Saints just aren't that good of a team this year. They are 1-2, unfortunately. The Saints did have a bye week this week. Next week, they're going to be taking on the 3-1 Buccaneers. And then, very surprising in my opinion, the Niners defeat the Rams. Watch out for San Francisco, man. Coach Morphus Washington and the Niners are 3-1. They last year were not great. I think they probably won maybe five or six games, but they're three and one right now. They've beaten some solid opponents like the Cowboys. They clobbered the Jets, and now they're beating the defending champions. The Rams go down to two and two. They lost to the Seahawks earlier in the season. I wouldn't be worried if I was the Rams, but that's still surprising that they are two and two up to this point. As the Houston Texans win their first game of the year over the Cincinnati Bengals. I think the score is 27-17. Cincinnati falls down to 1-3. They won week one, and I thought they had a legit shot to do something this year. But they've lost three straight, and they just lost to maybe the worst team in the league in the Houston Texans. So if I was Coach Terrence Bowling, I would be very scared. Cleveland Browns beat the Dallas Cowboys, 38-21. Dallas goes down to 1-3. Cleveland goes up to 2-2. Two two. Both of these teams won their respective divisions last year, and this year hasn't been as kind. The Cowboys have had a pair of heartbreaking losses, while Cleveland has been sort of up and down this season. They did beat Cincinnati as well. They might be 3-1, actually. Are they 3-1 or 2-2? Two two? I don't remember. I know they got killed by the Steelers. And then the Redskins beat the Seahawks. This is a huge win for Washington. They were 1-2. The Redskins are going all in on this year, and they really had to win this game, and they did as Coach DeAndre Phoenix and the Redskins have really blown up this roster. I think they've done a great job, and this is a huge win for them. And they are now, I believe, tied for the lead, or I think they're one game behind the Eagles. Not entirely sure. While the Seahawks go down to 2-2, two and two, of course, they beat the defending champions Rams back in Week 2, and have sort of, sort of fallen off a bit as they've lost two straight to the Jets and the Redskins. And then last but not least on Thursday Night Football, a CPU matchup as the Giants beat the Eagles. It's been a pretty solid year for the Eagles. They are looking good in the ONFC East. Washington right now looks like their only main competition, so it does seem like we will see a new team from that division in the playoffs this year as, of course, the Cowboys were the only team to make it last year. So here's a look at the Week 5 schedule. I'm not entirely sure who is a bye. Uh, this past week, the Saints, Cardinals, Ravens, and uh, Jets all had byes. If your team is not in there, then you have a bye. So here's a look at the standings after four weeks. Buffalo, of course, leads the OAFC. Browns are 2-2. Two and two. And the Chargers, Broncos, and Raiders bringing up the rear. Lions, Eagles, Niners, Falcons, and Bucks atop the ONFC. Cardinals, the only winless team so far in the LFL. I'm a Bobby girl in the Bobby world. Loving plastic, it's fantastic. You can brush my hair, I'm just me everywhere. Imagination, life is your creation. Hey, hey, man.